Hi everyone. I've been thinking a lot about some of the things that we've talked about over the last couple of videos and things. And one of the things that I've really been reaching into is some of the indecision that I see in, in people. Uh, their inability to make a decision or to think every decision has spiritual implications or every decision is going to negate or enhance what they're getting ready to do. And one of the things I've learned is it probably rides on a singular scripture uh, not taken out of context and it's Mark 16:20, and it simply says that wherever they went the Lord worked with them and with the preaching of the word many signs and wonders closely accompanied those things and I say that to say that I think too often we predicate our lives that everything is going to push us or take a, you know push us towards or take us away from an area we want to be and the difficulty is that when uh, people think that they know more about God than they do, or they know less about God. And so recently I've been thinking about what is the key. And the key comes down to this. Only last night I talked to a young person, and I was talking about being plugged in. But I realized about a week and a half ago that I had made notes, and it talked about being plugged in, being connected. And so the Lord's been percolating this, and it's become one of those messages that you share with people as you go through it, and, 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 and you watch the results. When we are plugged into what God is saying, it is very difficult, uh, first and foremost, that we, we recognize that we are not outside the will of God, but we recognize that God is working through us, that He wants to be part and parcel of everything that we say and what we're doing. Now, I'm not saying we, we just go out and make decisions and, and, and make all the dumb decisions because we can make a dumb decision. What I'm specifically saying is that I think we need to devote more time just to hanging out with God and less time to what he's trying to say. Because what he's trying to say will come through us. I do want to know what God's saying. I do cry out for wisdom. But more importantly, I know that when my grandson's with me in a crowd, he needs to be holding my hand at four years old so I don't lose him. But I also know that when I'm outside in the middle and being in a meadow or something, sometimes it's just nice to hold his hand or he holds my hand because it connotates the feeling of closeness that's between us. And I think one of the things that we need to understand is that when we are cl close, when we are plugged into what God is saying, it is less likely that we will be out of where He would like us to be because we're holding His hand. We're, we, we, we talk about the scripture in the book of Matthew where it says that His yoke is easy and His burden is light. What does that mean? It means we are yoked together. We are holding the hand of our Father. And as long as we hold the hand of our Father, we're walking where He would go. But at the same time, as a father and a grandparent, I'm not unwilling to let my grandson or my children go where they would like to be. As long as I can see them, that's really cool. And where is it you can be where God cannot see you? Nowhere. He is wanting you to take... Even in the prophetic words, some of the vagueness is there so you can express the very character and nature that God has already sown into your life by His very creation of you. You are created in His image. And so He's sown into you characteristics, nuances, things that are unique to you. And He wants to see you express those things. Just as He wants someone to paint while another plays football. Just as He wants someone to sing while another draws. We need to understand that we were created equally, each one of us created in His image, but with the ability to be who God has created us to be. Less concerned with our destiny and more concerned with the process that we're going through. What appears to us to be mundane is character building, and it reveals. It reveals frustration. It reveals potential areas of bitterness. It reveals characteristics of sloth and things that God wants to weed out of our lives. Those don't happen in the mountaintops. Those happen when we're down in the valleys. And so today, think about that. Holding the hand of God is walking with God. But at the same time, he's not always saying, let me be the leader. He's saying, let me walk with you. He's passionate about being able to walk with you. I hope my grandson never decides to not walk in my presence because it would be hurtful to me and I think ultimately it's hurtful to him. Not because we have this ungodly, codependent thing going, but our relationship is shared. And God wants to share his relationship with you. Thanks and God bless you.